well, 2022 is coming to a close. So let's look at let's look at all the good things and ignore the bad things. And that good things are albums, CDs, albums, whatever you want to studio records. The albums that came out in 2022 were some of my favorites. I know there's some that have gone to my favorites, which are on this list. And yeah, usually people will go and put them out of like 5, 10. I had to go with 20. I had to go with 20 because, well, there's just so many good ones that came out this year that I just can't leave some of them off. So yeah, actually it's out of 21. I lied on the uh, thing. It's out of 21. I'm doing it this year that way because, yeah, I accidentally added one and yeah, I couldn't take it out, so. You're seeing it here. So, number 21, or my 21st favorite of the year, is the Modern Arts, The Great Heathen Army. Well, I've come to like any Amon Amarth album, including this one. The Great Heathen Army is very heavy, and it has a slow, intense feel, but just has that aggression that you'd want from uh, Amon Amarth. Yeah, just absolutely amazing album this year. Some of the best ones on here. I'm going to go through that as well. Find a way out. Find a way or make one. Another great, uh, good song there. Dawn of Norsemen. Uh, the Great Heathen Army. This, uh, this album is just heavy. So yeah. And number 20 to go through. At number 20, I'm going to go kind of fast. I don't really want to spend too much time here. Um, number 20, surprisingly, Ozzy Osbourne's Patient Number 9. This one really surprised me this year. This is the best Ozzy album in the last 30 years, in my opinion. Heavy AF. And this album is has a, has a super group feel because of all the guest stars on it, like uh, uh, Zach Wilde, Jeff Beck, Tony Iommi, Eric Clapton, a lot of guests that play on this album and yeah the songs are just amazing honestly some and this album is 22's biggest surprise like i said before this is the biggest surprise of 2022 when i seen ozzy osmore and i usually expect the common like newer age ozzy stuff where i'm just not really into it but this album is different. It's new age. It has that new age sound to it. It's got those guitar sounds that um, are on like Scream. and But it's just so much better, honestly. I don't know what they did to the, I don't know what Ozzy did to this, but it's different. Number 19 is Saxon Carpe Diem. Like I reviewed before, I said this was one of the best ones. And well, it's at number 19, so... As you already know, these ones up above it are going to be really, really hard hitting and ones that you should check out. Um, Carpe Diem, Seize the Day, uh, Remember the Fallen, Remember the Fallen being one of my favorite songs from this year. Um, this album is a feel of new age of British heavy metal, but also has a new bite to it. Uh, the guitar tone is, the structure is like a new age, new uh, wave of British heavy metal, like structure, but the guitar tone it is just abs has some absolute balls to it. Just absolutely amazing stuff. Saxon in 2022 released their best album since the 80s. I'm going to say that. Absolute bangers on it. Check this one out. It's definitely worth your time. Number 18 is Immolation Acts of God. Probably a surprising one to have on here. For, like, I just got into Immolation this year. This was the album that got me into them. And, yeah, I've seen them live this year as well. I've seen them with Cannibal Corpse and Dark Mural this year. And they absolutely killed it. This album killed it, honestly. There's some good ones on here, like Act of God, uh, Blooded, uh, Apostle. Oh, this album is just really just gritty, nasty, and just... I hope I'm not the only one who says this, but this album is really good. The vocals on this album are really good, but it takes time to get into them. That's the thing that 
over the years. I've tried to get into this band so many times that the vocals just turn me off. But, what do you know? I got into the vocals, and I like this band now. So, a brutal death metal experience that fans of the genre should check out, honestly. You're missing out if you uh, don't check out uh, Immolation's Acts of God. I think it's a really good album. It's like one of their better ones, so I would say. It's one of their better ones. Next one is number 17, Noctum. I said this one would be on the list, and, well, I didn't lie. Um, I probably said some other ones were going to be on the list, but they didn't make it. Yeah, but, yeah, this one made it. Best black metal album of this year. So you already know there's no more black metal on this list that I can remember. No, there's no more black metal on this list. So, yep. Songs like Sovereign, uh, Sovereign Providence and uh, The Tolling of the Nine Bells. Just This album is just absolutely brutal. Nothing to say, I, I got nothing bad to say about this album. Knocked him in 2022, but put out the best black metal album of the year. Yes, the best black metal album of this year, and really that's all I had written down for it. Yeah, it's got the blast beat that you want, but it also has that like death metal element that they uh, have in their music. So, yeah, they're technically bl uh, black and death metal, which uh, they're more black metal. What you'd get with like arch go with war metal but like not as like bad production it's more like uh death metal production but like black metal style hope you understand that uh number 16 is a surprise seven kingdoms zenith seven kingdoms zenith this band was unknown to me until this album the tone and vocals are phenomenal as well as songwriting Universal Terrestrial has been stuck in my head all damn year, and, well, it actually doesn't bother me. This, usually songs that get stuck in my head become old and I start to hate them. I actually haven't got, I, that has not happened with Universal Terrestrial, but this album is absolutely amazing, honestly. Number 16. Number 15. I'm going to number 15 now is Grave Digger. Symbol of Eternity. You knew I had to have Gravedigger on here. I absolutely love this band. A lot of people uh, kind of like don't like them because of their vocals. I think their vocals are really like what makes what their vocals and their guitar tone and everything just makes this band just amazing. Gravedigger has always delivered. Honestly, can you deliver? Yep. That was a uh, Armored Saint reference. Don't kill me in the comment section. That's going to be a recurring joke on this channel. Can you deliver? Um, with an aggressive guitar tone and gritty guitar tone, this album is amazing. I forgot to mention, it also has the theme of crusades and holy symbols of history. A lot of a lot of like stuff like uh, symbol of eternity, knights of Jerusalem. Uh, the Last Crusade, Grace of God, a lot of, like, uh, crusade-type things, like, their albums always usually have some, like, historical thing to them. There's, like, some historical songs in there, like Sabaton, for example, but they've been along, they've been around a lot longer than Sabaton, so... Number 14 is going to piss people off that it's this low, which is Creator Hate Uber Alles. Um, one of the most intense thrash albums of the year. That just opening, like, the opening Hate Uber Alles is just, just fucking intense, honestly. It's just such a fucking intense song. But, yeah, Killer of Jesus, another one that's good, uh, Strongest of the Strong, a lot of great stuff on here. Even Dying Planet. Like, this album is flawless, honestly. Well, this album is one of the most intense thrash albums of this year. The creator brought intensity and amazing songwriting to the table in 2022. So, yeah. Love to see a creator album put out. Love to see a new one uh, to connect with. Because, like, 
the ones that come out when I'm a fan when I'm a fan of the band like already usually sticks with me more as you're gonna see by number one. I'm not gonna spoil number one, but number thirteen is another one I said that was gonna be on the list and I reviewed in December. Candlemass. Like I said before, I reviewed it in December. A lot of people put these lists out in November. Don't understand that. Uh, I think that December is like the, the late December, like after the holidays is like the best time to put these out because like, yeah, you're basically just looking back in the year before it's over. Uh, Candlemass, Sweet Evil Sun, Candlemass album. Love this band. Loved them ever since I was a kid. Um, yeah, I got into this band really early. Candlemass proves, once again, with this Epic Doom masterpiece, why they are the biggest in this genre. Epic Doom genre. The Epic Doom genre. If I was talking about Doom Metal, you would, I would probably think of Black Sabbath, but if you tell me Epic Doom, I'm thinking of Candlemass. And this is why. This is the best Doom release of the year. Um, no more Doom ahead of this. Like... There was a Death Doom album on the list, which was Immolation earlier, but yeah. Cannabis, Sweet Evil Sun, and number 13. 12 is one that's going to surprise a lot of people to actually be on the list, which is Undeath, It's Time to Rise from the Grave. Holy shit, did this band improve heavily when they put this one out. This is a big improvement from their last one their last one just absolutely kicked ass the last one but this one is an absolute improvement on this um straight up classic sounding death metal like it sounds like old school cannibal corpse almost um with all those solos and riffs to boot grimy and nasty production quality makes this album fun to listen to the production is not perfect which is the best thing for this album if, the, if this was a clean produced album, this uh, it wouldn't be as good, honestly. The riffs just stick out and just hit you hard and just won't stop, honestly. <laughs> Songs like uh, Enhancing the Dead, for example. Listen to that one. Uh, Fiend for Corpses, uh, Bone Rot, Trampled Headstones. Just absolutely a fucking awesome album. Um, number 11. Lamb of God Omens. I thought this one was going to be higher, but it ended up here. Of course, the intense uh, death metal, groove metal, whatever you want to put them in genre. The mainstream death metal band from, yeah, the mainstream death metal band. They became mainstream with their style. This album hits hard, one of the most intense albums from 2022. The song quality is immaculate. Randy's screams are better than ever before, and the tone is more intense than ever before. This is probably one of their most intense albums, but I would still say The Covenant and uh, Ashes in the Wake and even the self-titled from a couple years ago would be a little bit better than this album. But still, it's still a great release and still belongs on a list like this. I know a lot of people will discard it because it's like, oh, it's really popular metal, but it's popular for a fucking reason. It's very much popular for a fucking reason. Number 10 is Avantasia. A paranormal event with the Moonflower Society. Yeah. A lot of people are going to be mad at me for putting this one on the list, but... This album, anything Tobias Samet can put out is always going to be top fucking notch. That guy is a master at master at musicianship and songwriting, honestly. This album is really strong. The vocal performances are some of the best of the year. It has a grand feel throughout with how the songs sound. And holy shit, the lineup for the supergroup this, of this one is amazing. Floor Jansen, Michael Kisk, Jorn Land, Eric Martin, Jeff Tate. What not to like about this, man? They're, it's just so packed with so much good vocalists and musicians. It's absolutely great stuff. And number nine is Miss May I, Curse of Existence. 
metalcore. I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, they put metalcore on the list. There's deathcore coming up. Um, but yeah. Curse of Existence. Miss May I, the metalcore release, hit, this metalcore release hits hard. Miss May I, even from the early days, have been have laid down some pretty heavy songs. But these are on another level. Oh, and the breakdowns have uh, uniqueness all the way through the record. Unlike a lot of uh, stuff that comes out nowadays. Yeah, they had uniqueness all the way through this album with how they uh, put their breakdowns together. And you won't see them coming, so that's another plus here. Songs like Earthshaker, Bleed Together, uh, Unconquered hollow vessel just the whole fucking record honestly another one with the whole fucking record number eight hammerfall hammer of dawn power metal of course i had to put hammerfall on here i absolutely love this band i've seen them once before um live it was when i was seeing them with sabaton but Hammerfall really brought good songs to this one. Seems like Hammerfall is in the new era of the band. Album is proof of it. As you, If you've seen my ranking, you know exactly where I put this one. And yeah, I really didn't get good reactions from that video or people agreeing with me too much. But this album is pretty damn good. Even though it doesn't have like the really uh, heavy like breakdown, like the heavy uh, headbanging parts. It's more like straightforward power metal hammerfall with King Diamond on it too. There's a King Diamond on Venerate Me, I think it is, or Riveries. Not too sure what song it is, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all of what I really have to say about that one. Number seven, a surprise, a very big surprise. Revocation, Nether Heaven. A lot of people are going to be like, why is this one here? Uh, but yeah, Chaotic and Technical Death Metal, some of my favorite stuff to listen to on this album fulfills. Songwriting is absolutely flawless, and the vocals are brutal, and the tone is top notch. This is a brutal fucking album. Just from front to back, it's just plain and utter fucking brutality. Um, you have, uh, Recrucified, Strange Internal, uh, The Ninth Chasm. Yeah, fucking great, man. Fucking great stuff. A Diabolical Majesty. Just, and the riffs are so damn con complex. If you don't like Tech Death, you won't like this, but I, I like Tech Death. I really do. I think Tech Death, I listen to a lot of Tech Death, honestly. And Progressive Death, which that one didn't, it, none of those ones got on the list for some reason. Number six. Going into this, I thought this one would be a lot higher. But yeah, Sabaton, the war to end all wars. The Sabaton album from the year. And you know, a Sabaton album is going to be good. Going into this, I knew this album was going to be go going to be higher on the list. Everything in set, everything Sabaton has been doing. But the solos are more complex and the riffs got better. The songwriting has been taken up to another level, honestly. Um, I, I like everything. I, the modern day Sabaton with like the Great War and this album, they've taken the solos and they've gone nuts with them. Like they're hard to, pl they're really hard to play solos. If you look at their old stuff, it's basically like just shreddy solos. These are like melodic, more like you have to get exactly where it's where the note is to actually or on the fretboard to actually get the sound correctly. Yeah, holy shit! And the topics on this album are great. Uh, the storm uh, stormtroopers, uh, the unkillable soldier, about a soldier that couldn't get killed. Uh, basically, did a tremendous amount of dangerous and stuff in the wars hell fighters race to the sea is about the defense of belgium uh lady of the dark valley of death valley of death being absolutely amazing and christmas truce as yeah christmas you you already know what that one is the 1914 truce where everybody came where the germans and french and 
British basically had a truce for Christmas in 1914. And then the next day went back to killing each other because that's what war is and war sucks. War is absolute shit, but yeah. I didn't write anything down for this and I'm an idiot, but I'm going to have to wing this one. Number five, Lorna Shore Pain Remains. Of course, this one's got to be on here. I said there's going to be more deathcore, and there is, and there's more metalcore. So, yeah, but yeah. Of course, this album has to be here. I spent so much fucking money on tickets to see Lorna Shore this year. It was ridiculous. Of course, I'm going to put this album on here because, well, I seen the album live. I seen some of these songs live. Oh, welcome, oh, welcome back, oh, sleeping dreamer. Fucking hell, that song is absolutely great. I, I couldn't believe that, I couldn't believe it, like, it just had this long-ass intro, and then just, boom, just right into it, just intense as fuck. Into the Earth, Sun Eater, of course, that fast-ass rip that they have in that Sun Eater song, Curse to Die, Soulless Existence, Apotheosis, Wrath, and then the uh, Pain Remains, Part 1, 2, and 3, which is basically just one big, long-ass song. Yeah. And the introduction to Will Ramos, and he's a beast on vocals. What else to say about it? This album is fucking amazing. Of course. Number four, if you stuck around this long and you haven't clicked off because I put Deathcore and Metalcore on here, here's another Metalcore record. And one that was completely, that completely messed me up after listening to because it's just heart-wrenching, honestly, to listen to. This one is very painful to listen to, which is We Came as Romans, Dark Bloom. I reviewed this one early on in, uh, in the year, and yeah, that's what I basically said about it. It's hard to get through. You have to listen to this album. It's one of the most emotional albums released in the year. This album has song, some songs that just, are just some pure emotion, like uh, Home More Day and Promise You. Yeah, Promise You is the best song on the album, but it's so hard to get through because it's just so much pain that they put into that song. And, yeah, I really can't explain it. You just have to listen to it and then look up what it was about. So that's basically where you have to go for that one is look it up. Look in the comment section on YouTube for... Uh, promise you by uh we came as romans to understand why this song is so messes the listener up so much number three assault the bl a blind eye this hardcore thrash album is a masterpiece every single song is intense and aggressive not a single wasted moment on this album and one of my favorite albums in 2022 yeah a band that comes from Cleveland and I think are subscribed to this channel, so yeah. I reviewed this one early on in the uh when it came out. Went to see the uh like went to see them play this album in full down at like my uh down at one of my local areas for uh seeing shows. I've seen obituary there and I've seen destruction there. Yeah, this album is absolutely amazing. I think that just, it's just, uh, songs like, uh, The Second Head of the Snake and Antebellum, it's just so fucking intense, it's, yeah, you can't stop headbanging to this one, honestly, I love it, love the album, and it's at number three, top three of the best albums of the year, now number two and number one are on a different fucking level, like, number two and number one surprised the ever-living fuck out of me. Number two is a Deathcore album, which is fit for an autopsy. Oh, what the future holds. Oh, what a crushing experience. And the best Deathcore album of the year. In 2019, Sea of Tragic Beasts cranked it up to 11 in this year. Oh, what the future holds. Cranked it up to a mighty fucking 12. Yes, this album is progressive in some parts, heavy in some parts, and just some parts are just both of them together. And it's just intense and crazy and over the top at some parts and just quiet and just sends you into this false sense of security as it just fucking rips you apart. Next part. Absolutely amazing stuff. Um, yeah, ten tracks that 
you should listen to before the end of the world, as I would say. So yeah, fit for an autopsy of what the future holds at number 12, or number 2, um, messed that up, but number 1 is my favorite album of the year, which is Destruction's Diabolical. Of course, one of my, probably my favorite band of all time, um, if you watch my ranking on Destruction, you will understand why this album is so high in the list. Um, go watch that video. Honestly, you'll see why if you just skip to the end. I give I give you I give you permission to skip to the end on any of my videos if you don't want to hear all the other stuff about all the bottom tier albums. But this album had me head banging for the whole way through it. It's back to back thrash bangers. This one. Is the most aggressive thrash album I've, or one of the most aggressive thrash metal albums I've ever heard, and one of my favorite albums to listen to ever. Yes, it would be on my top ten favorite albums of all time. This album here, Destruction Diabolical, it's just an absolute fucking banger. Songs like Diabolical, just that opening, just screech that uh, uh, Shimer does on this album, it's just great man um hope dies last the last dying breath uh state of empathy probably my favorite song on the album state of empathy rapidly i yeah, just absolutely love that uh yeah and i've seen them live on this tour as well so i got to see a lot of these songs live and got to mosh and all this other stuff and and yeah it was a fucking amazing show as well. It was with uh, Nervosa as well. If you know that band. But yeah, that's the top 20 albums of 2022. Actually, 21. But yeah. Hope everyone liked it. And I will see everyone in 2023. And have.